Are traditional telecom standards holding back innovation and deployments, or is there a better way they can coexist with the open source community? And how can CSPs take full advantage of the opportunities presented by stronger cooperation? We think that as a, a standards organisation, it's our obligation to make sure that we have all the mechanisms in, in place that allows our members to decide whether they want to do work either in a body like Etsy or in a body like Linux Foundation. And, and invariably for a large and complicated piece of work there will be some work being done in an open source foundation, some work being done in a standardization body. The standards provide the stability on which we innovate. I mean we, we can't have speed in open source development without some fundamental understanding of what we're speeding away or towards from. Um, so uh, there is always a, a, a give and a take. Um, I think there is a very healthy and strong overlap between what the standards and the open source communities are trying to do today. It creates some, some contention even. I think that when a standards body gets very reified and let's argue to the nth degree about how to do things before anyone tries to implement it, uh, things go very sideways. Um, having folks actually spec out architecture, uh, think about implications, you know, so that it's not, you know, completely spaghetti code um, is also valuable. I mean, I think really we're all just trying to sort of solve problems um, for the, the ecosystem and there are different um, ways in which technical work gets done in any sort of software development project. We are halfway through the uh, development of a new standardization engineering process which will maintain a lot of the attributes we have in traditional tr standards making which we want to keep but it will look and feel very much like an open source project for the contributors. So the output file might be a PDF file rather than software code, but the route to get there will look and feel very much more like an open source project mm -hmm. than a standards committee that we have today. And, and we're, we're sort of halfway along the way of delivering this new engineering process. You can't collaborate without knowing the minds of, uh, of, of your, your colleagues across the table. And often many of the operators in the room and the vendors in the room will be members of multiple organizations and, and, and you know, we, we hear about what's going on as far as we can, but we can't really delve into, into the, the plans and future of Etsy without a liaison agreement. So I think, I think communication is key here. And I think um, opening up those lines earlier is absolutely necessary. I think that's the, 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 real, the real benefit with having collaboration between the open source communities and the standards communities is, is to, to be blunt, it gives the standards guys a hurry up. Um, you know, th there have been activities in the past where the lack of consensus has held things up for significantly longer than was absolutely necessary. This sort of idea of wait for a perfect spec and then implement just doesn't really work all that well. So you don't have to get your spec perfect, right? You can iterate on it and people can actually try concepting it, or if there is a place where there's a lack of consensus over two choices, you can actually go try them out in real life and that might make your decision for you. There is a bit of a trade-off here because yeah. yes, it takes time to reach consensus, but if you've got 600 member companies in a room who eventually reach consensus, you know they're going to deploy exactly the same thing. So every operator on the planet who's about to launch 5G is deploying exactly that same standard. Exactly. Now, if you're going to go for the rough consensus running code approach, yeah, you might get there quicker. The trouble is you're going to fragment the market. And as we saw with NFE, you have half a dozen open source projects pop up, which in my opinion actually slowed down the development of NFE because industry was so confused and saying, well, which one of these projects should I go and send my staff to now? Mm. So, yes, it takes time to reach consensus, but the benefit is you take an entire industry with you and everyone deploys the same thing. So you know, I guess the, the rough consensus in code doesn't mean that you don't eventually get to a consensus. It's a tool to get there with, I think, a little bit more um, maybe proof points under your belt and actually potentially quicker. But the idea isn't that people start implementing you know, necessarily the earlier iterations. It helps the iterations happen and get to something more solid. Yeah, we're, we're not after fragmentation. We're not after but that's what you get. <laughs> if we don't have a liaison agreement with you yeah. and actually feed that back in and, and inform the standards creation process, right? So, so surely in, in, in the process, if someone writes a, uh, you know, part of your, your, your PDF file that comes out in an agile way, and I, I, I love what you're saying about that, um, if that then gets picked up at an earlier stage, 
and informed by a group of fast-moving um, people with, with soldering irons and lab equipment um, to, to, to give information back, that can be recognized and, 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 and reset and harden that, that process, surely. But, but this is exactly why uh, ETSI members, when NFE started, ISG NFE started, that's yeah. why the ETSI members said, we want to have an open source project within ETSI because it's so right. tightly coupled to the development of the mm -hmm. standard that as you're writing that standard, before the ink is dry, we will have that code running in parallel. Right. And, and that's, that's why we were lobbied by our members I mean, as, as someone who was responsible for making sure that Etsy could do that, yeah. this was tough for us because we, we hadn't done this before. Right. But it was our members that were saying, we do not want to go externally to an open source foundation because we want this coupling so tight that there is yeah. no delay between completion of standard and production of the software, which is totally standards compliant. Yeah. I but think that cuts into, into part of what we're trying to solve with both standards and open source. I mean, we, we, we don't... We don't use OpenStack for an infrastructure layer because it serves the telecommunications market best. Mm -hmm. um, if we wanted to do that, we would have built it in Etsy. Yep. Uh, we use OpenStack because everyone has access to it and everyone yep. can use it and, mm -hmm. it's, and it's broadly common. And Kubernetes at the application layer, again, we, we didn't choose that because it's going to run telco workloads better. In fact, yeah, well, <laughs> we, can have that, we can have that debate at another time. But um, we do it because it's going to allow us to bring other applications into the telco market. Uh, and it may be that we have OpenStack and Kubernetes throughout the telco network and still 50% of the telco workloads are not on them because it's just not suitable for those types of workloads. But what, what we need from standards is, is, is to help define the boundaries that allow that innovation to occur, not necessarily to come in and say that innovation should be like this in a box. And, and that's, I think, where we have to find this, the balance that I was really talking about. Let's not standardize things we don't need to. Let's get the standards done where it really provides value. So the, this sort of myth that standards bodies are in control of their own destiny is not true. You know, it's, it's entirely to the membership that decides and industry decides where those resources go. And this is why you have things popping up because industry goes to an open source project, they get disenfranchised, they create a new one and, and, and so on. But to the point of becoming a DSP, you're in a world where the applications that you want, the people that you're serving are not necessarily the people who care about the network, right? And so, I mean, just to, to use an example, you know, one of the most interesting developments right now, and this reminds me of some of this morning saying, you know, Uber, you know, is sort of networking. One of the most interesting projects around networking right now in the cloud native, um, cloud native uh, compute foundation is a project called Envoy around layers four to seven networking called Service Mesh, and it came from Lyft to solve their own networking problems for their application. They have now contributed it as an open source and hardcore telcos as they're looking at how to implement cloud native um, NFV are really looking at this as a strong contender for adopting. So we are adopting technologies that Lyft created for networking. So, I mean, we, need, we also, I think, need to a lot of times, so you're asking like, what is the boon? What is the barrier? I think we really have to start looking at ourselves as part of a larger application development ecosystem. We, we need to be a lot more inclusive and to be involved in more than three standards, open source or other organizations like ours is an encumbrance to smaller innovative players. And they really have to pick and choose very carefully where they sit and play. And I, I think we could, we could benefit those organizations by having greater liaison to save them the trouble of being involved in many. Which one that they choose to be involved in is entirely up to them. Now we're talking about open source standards and we're talking about more traditional standards, but if you look at the people who are writing those standards today, there'll be a very different set of people writing those standards in 10 years time. We have a whole new generation of people coming up who will expect to work in this agile and innovative yeah, right. way. So, you know, you're not going to be able to find the traditional standards writers because they ain't going to be around. So, to some extent, we're forced to change our, yeah. our ways of working because the, the people who are doing the work are changing.